Okay. Um, can we record this? I think there's a way of doing it, but I didn't. Um, we're, we're, we're in session now. Hello. Recording in progress. Oh, I, okay, I think all parties are here now. Mr. Gibson, will you be turning your camera on today? Say it one more time, please. Will you be turning your camera on today? Turning it off. Oh, oh, oh it went off again. Yeah, okay, I see. Okay, Back all righty. Well, welcome to this morning to the First District Court of Appeals. Mm -hmm. We have three cases that are scheduled for argument this morning. The first case that we have is the case of, and it's actually two cases that we're going to hear in arguments today um, as the first case, which is Sullivan versus Ruhlman and Gibson versus Ruhlman, Ruhlman which are cases number C210217 and C210218. And just a couple of preliminary matters. So um, Mr. Sullivan, we're going to have you argue first. Um, and then we're going to have Mr. Gibson, you will argue next, and then the state will respond. Now, because each of you are the ones that are filing the appeal or the appellants, and it, with your 15 minutes that each of you have to argue, you can reserve part of that time to respond to attorney Sawyer's arguments. So I'm going to start out with Mr. Sullivan and ask you, Mr. Sullivan, would you like to reserve any portion of your 15 minutes? Yes, I'd like to reserve five minutes. Okay, so that's going to give you 10 minutes and then five for rebuttal, okay? And Mr. Gibson, would you like to reserve any of your 15 minutes? Yes, ma'am, I'll do five minutes also. Is that all you have? Is, uh, okay. is the attorney Sawyer? Pardon me? Is that, do we have the three attorneys? Yes, attorney Christopher Sawyer is with us this morning. And that's all we have. That's correct. Now, okay. somebody is getting a lot of feedback on their system. So what I'm going to do is, um, Mr. Sawyer and Mr. Gibson, if you can be so kind to turn off your microphones at this time. And then when it's time for you to speak, then you can turn it back on. Okay, got you. Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Sullivan, you have yes. 10 minutes, and you can begin when you're ready. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, thank you. Are you, are you recording this session by chance? No, it, it said ask permission. And then, okay. Uh, but I'm, I, I would assume that I could get a recording from you, but could I record? Well, we, we are recording, and you can get on our website, and um, starting tomorrow, you'll have, a, you'll have access to that and it'll be on there <laughs> pretty much for an extended period of time. Um, I'm not sure why we're getting a lot of feedback, but let's just, I guess, let's just see the best that we can do here. Okay. Um, all right. Well, just tell me when you're ready. When you're ready, you can start, but we are really getting a lot of feedback, so I don't know why that is. We're going to wait until it's correct. Well, well, it's coming from your it's coming from your system. Um, I don't know. I just have my telephone and my um, my computer on. That's about it. So, Your Honor, if I may, if Mr. Sullivan has his computer and his cell phone going, that's what's going to trigger the feedback. He's going to need to mute one or the other. Yeah, but I don't. My cell phone's not dialed into this system, or it's not. Uh, I can shut it off. Give me a second here. My cell phone shut off now. Okay, <laughs> that wasn't it, but thank you for trying. We appreciate it. Did well, you do it? Let's, I guess I don't, I mean, I, I, I'm out of ideas. So if you can just go ahead and begin your argument. Perhaps if you turn down your sound a little bit, it might be what's triggering the feedback. 
Uh, let me see what we got here. <laughs> okay. That's a bunch. I'll turn it down. Oh my. Okay. Any good any luck there? Or? No, for some reason we're still getting out of feedback. Well, just you know, go ahead and argue. I'm I'm I we are very active listening to you, so okay. Uh, hi, well, good morning. Uh, the question before the court this morning is, is uh, does someone have a First Amendment right in a public hallway to walk next to somebody who's exercising a First Amendment right? Uh, Mr. Gibson and myself were on the way to this meeting on January 15, 2021 to see Andrew Gillen. Um, at that particular point in time, um, we had been approached um, approximately 45 minutes after going through a Terry pat down. So the officers had complete knowledge of what electronics were there and what we were doing there. Um, the standard in today's is Enoch versus Hogan Sheriff Department decided 2019, April 19th at the 6th District um, in the Western Division, case number 116 CV 416. Um, in terms of which more important to myself is Johnson versus the city of Cincinnati. Um, could you hear any of this? Because uh, I can hear so much feedback that uh, this is almost impossible to do. But if you can hear it, I will continue. Um, I, I, I have followed every word that you have said. Okay, I, I don't want to. I saw you know, nods from Judge Block. And the important Judge points Krause. getting lost in the, um, in the technology. Okay, now when we're talking about public policy, um, the judges committee that Judge Ruman admitted to being a part of is only advisory to the court. The one that has final decision is the sheriff um, and this Mr. Gillen who runs the courthouse. So, um, unfortunately he took it upon himself, to, um, but it, because nothing was giving us, give us a notice at the, it creates no obligation and there is no obligation for me to follow said, uh, rule that was, uh, was never delivered upon us and no due process. The Mulberry, most one of the famous cases you all know about, Mulberry versus Madison, US 137, and Norton versus Shelby uh, County. Uh, this was uh, way back to March 9th, 1867, and it, uh, it had no lawful existence, and it was an unauthorized illegal body that created said rule. Um, it was then checked by the clerk of court if there was any factual meeting. And I believe you have the documentation in front of you. The clerk has certified that nothing has happened. And Pat Dressing has certified the same thing. Um, there was no meeting for this so-called fictitious rule that was made up. Um, so no state shall convert a law um, that's secured by liberties and issue a license or a fee for it, this uh, Murdoch versus Pennsylvania 319 US 305. If they do, uh, Shuttles versus, versus Birmingham, you can ignore the license and exercise the right with impunity. Mind you, I was just trying to travel freely through the hallway when I was um, kidnapped in the front hallway of 1000 Main Street. Um, as we move on, um, and, and when you do the interpretation of this particular law, uh, the law had no other purpose to put, put a chill on the constitutional rights and penalizing us who choose to exercise those rights. Um, 
why on that particular day that they decided to do it. The only thing I can tell you that uh, there's been new evidence discovered uh, on December 2nd, Sergeant Dreyer, who was leading this uh, group of individuals, did make a threat to me in front of the courthouse. And I have that uh, later to listen to if you choose to. Uh, and then he carried out his threat uh, just because Mr. Gibson was a person of color. And it was, it was somewhat baffling to myself and to Mr. Gibson. Um, the whole, which earlier they called it a, a hearing, uh, I wouldn't classify that because it did not meet any of the rules of uh, 19D, rules of criminal procedure. And the whole procedure, um, the judge Ruman has refused to answer. Motions were made during that procedure or meeting or whatever you want to call it, um, but it was highly inappropriate for anyone that has been in the legal system as long as Judge Ruhlman has. Um, now, the rules of superintendents, um, Rule 9 specifically states that the United States Constitution and the Ohio Constitution uh, in established law, Article 6, Clause 2, which makes that the supremacy clause, they are obligated to follow that and not just arbitrarily and capriciously try to enforce some law um, because they had threatened myself. And um, Sergeant Dreyer was given notice on uh, November 9th of 2021. So it's been a lot large uh, six month educational process through Major Hendricks, through Sergeant Dreyer and through Lieutenant Brogan. Um, they seized the opportunity as um, Major Hendricks retired. And, and I'm sure you have the emails that I sent to you. Uh, Hendricks was willing to meet with myself um, to discuss the inappropriateness of his employees. But the, the severe lack of training and um, where they choose their discretion. Sergeant Dreyer has also implicated a Judge uh, Lubers and that was done way back in July, at which he steps into the uh, position of the judge and then starts writing up the orders M200,001, M200,002. Uh, so the whole procedure, we are now here today arguing over this particular thing, but the protection of the rights, which all the judges here on this panel have a duty, a sworn duty that's been accepted by myself, I accept all your oaths. Uh, the First Amendment right, um, both the media and the general public to attend and share information and conduct of trials is a, is a guaranteed right. And it's not a crime to, to go into any courthouse in the United States and exercise these rights. Um, they just, um, the Hamilton County Courthouse, they just don't follow any of the standards that are given by the, uh, and Hamilton County is a political subdivision corporation and they are granted these rights only if they follow the rules that, that uh, under the state of Ohio, the constitution of the state of Ohio, and it's explicitly in the rules, um, rule nine, appendix C. The standard for security and incident reporting, the December 2nd issue um, that I have on recording, uh, Sergeant Dreyer threatens that there'll be retributions. And then on that, that uh, January 15th, in fact, he carried out those retributions. With and Mr. Uh, Sullivan, I just want to bring to your attention, you have about one minute left of your 10 minutes. Right, I know. So anyways, um, 16th uh, Amjuris uh, section 97 says that all these will be interpreted in my favor. So we don't have any encroachment or uh, abridgment of my rights. 
Uh, in terms of legal advertising, that's section 710, pack dressing. Uh, um, Judge Ruman, no one ever noticed us as we noticed um, Sergeant Dreyer. Um, the whole procedure under 470501, you had a um, sheriffs acting as prosecutors. You had judges acting as prosecutor and witness. Um, it is all in the transcripts that you have got copy of. And the whole thing was uh, a sham legal process. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, there's many cases referencing uh, this particular process, but um, the 2921.45 Ohio Revised Code interfering with civil rights, they, they managed to do that uh, pretty good. The Ohio Rules of Evidence 103. Mr. Sullivan, Sullivan, if you'd like to wrap up. Okay, all right. I just wanted to say the um, that that whole sham legal process didn't follow any of the rules of the state of Ohio. So how it's able to go on is somewhat surprising. So uh, I will reserve my other five minutes for. Okay, perfect. Um, so before we go forward, Mr. Gibson. Yes, ma'am. I think you're going to, you might experience the same feedback because it appears as if you and Mr. Sullivan are sitting in close proximity, or more importantly, your computers are sitting in close proximity. Um, so if you move away, whatever distance you're able to move away, I, that will probably be our best solution to avoiding the feedback. And Mr. Sullivan, if you can turn your mic off, no, hope that that would also help with the feedback. Okay. How about that? I mean, there's still feedback there, but you do have your microphone on. Yeah, I got it off. I just disconnected it. You may have, I don't know what you've disconnected because the microphone is still on because we hear you. <laughs> Mr. Gibson, if you want to go ahead and proceed and we will cross our fingers and hope that we don't get the feedback. Okay, I think I see the two judges. You said there's three judges, right? Yeah, there are three judges here, which is the way the Court of Appeals always gives you three judges. Okay, I don't see the third judge. The third, I see Sawyer and Beck. So with the us other, this morning is... Oh, be you, be you, be you. I'm sorry, it's you. I'm sorry. Yes, okay, it's so... It's you. Yeah, with us this morning, we have Judge Marilyn Zayas. We have Judge Candace Krause and Judge Ginger Bach, which are the three judges. So, Mr. Okay. Gibson, if you can proceed when you're ready. Yes, hi, judges. Uh, my name is Dave Gibson. I'm one of the people of Ohio, and in this court of record, I do state that I do have uh, first-hand knowledge of this procedure, and it was uh, in the state of Ohio in Hamilton County on January the 15th, uh, 2001. Judge Robert Rubin, Michael Dreyer, Dennis Rogan, and others exceeded their authorities by executing a illegal, unlawful procedure. Myself, Mr. Gibson, who's a honorable, decorated Vietnam vet who took the oath to defend the Constitution from all enemies, for and domestic, I'm declaring Judge Rubin, Michael Dreyer, Dennis Brogan exceeded their authority by executing a unlawful procedure. January 15th, I entered the courthouse at 1000 Main Street, Cincinnati, Ohio, 
I was accompanied by James Sullivan. We both had a front month to see Major Walter Hendricks, Court Delivery, uh, Andrew Gillum, Court Administration, and Roger, the Court IT Specialist. Major Walter Hendricks, he agreed and confirmed our meeting by email. Isaac Gibson also wanted to inform Major, Major Walter Hendrick of two illegal, unlawful, premeditated. Incidents on Wilson. The first unlawful, illegal, unlawful was on 10 13 20. The second illegal, premeditated, unlawful, December the 8th, 2020. The court, the, the court delivery service illegally violated both policy ORC 4511-00. The sheriff definitely leaves all vehicles running unattended. The second violation was unlawful was ORC 2909-07, criminal mischief, malicious destruction of property. My security cameras in the front of the building by court service division planned, premeditated, destroyed cameras in the front of the building. Mr. Andrew Gillum also agreed to meet in person with the IT test, IT specialists. We arrived approximately 12 o'clock. We also Mr. Gibson and Mr. Sullivan arrived approximately 11.30, which was our appointment. Mr. Sullivan, I had made it through security, Mr. Sullivan. I was waiting for Mr. Sullivan at the concession stand, and I was approached by Deputy Spears, left her duty station, and asked me what was on my phone. There was other people a lot closer to Deputy Spears who was on the phone these was Caucasian people that was on the phone and I was the only black person that she stopped. Uh, I feel that was totally illegal. My first amendment rights got totally been violated. Also Raleigh versus California, which is a landmark case where it was a unanimously decided that a warrantless search procedure 
of a cell phone is unconstitutional. Okay, back at the concession stand, that's where Deputy Spears wanted to see my phone. Did not understand why she would want to see my phone. There's all other people a lot closer to her, which was Caucasians. Not one word was said and done. Only myself. Later on, Sergeant Breyer came down with a rolled up piece of paper. We later found out the rolled up piece of paper was nothing. Sergeant Breyer said it was an order. Mr. Sullivan asked him, was it an order or was it a policy? He would not answer. Later on, we explained to Sergeant Dreyer that the courts cannot have a law that is superior to the, to the Constitution. All constitutional laws are superior to any law that we can make here in Hamilton County or in the state of Ohio. They cannot bridge any laws, any stipulations cannot bridge the Constitution. And this is exactly what I feel as though they did. They trespassed on my rights. They violated my First Amendment. They violated my Fourth Amendment. And the Fourteenth Amendment, they seized, they seized me and Mr. Sullivan. They took us around, judge shopping throughout the building, they found a judge, Judge Robert Rubin, who actually told me, Mr. Gibson, a honorable vet who took the oath, told me on the bench, I have no constitutional rights. I find it strange, me being the only black person there, that he decides to abuse me. Now, I'm the only one that dodged bullets fought for this country, fought for the Constitution. And to me, it seems like he's constantly violating every one of my rights, dealing with the Constitution. He tells me I have no constitutional rights at all. On the transfer, I find that strange coming from any Hamilton County judge who took the oath to defend the Constitution. Mr. Gibson? Deputies, they Mr. act Gibson, as prosecutors, just the deputies Can you hear me, Mr. Gibson? judges, Mr. Gibson, yes, you have about one minute left. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay. Um, the judges act as though he was the prosecutor. This was a total sham of a hearing or trial or whatever you want to call it. It was a total violation of my constitutional rights. He trespassed on my constitutional rights. And then a honorable decorated Vietnam vet dodged bullets for this person, this judge. And what I did, I get put in prison for 21 days. I get COVID. Um, so that's a death sentence. He tells me he's put me in prison forever. Put me in prison until I get until I open up my home. I cannot exercise my constitution, my First Amendment constitutional rights. It's ridiculous. This does not make sense to me at all. I'm very upset with this system. I'm very upset with this going on. It's been going on over a year. He stole my my Mr. Gibson, my I, laptop. I understand. I need I my laptop to do work. Mr. Gibson. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I understand. Um, I would you like to reserve five minutes? Yes, would you like to continue? Please. Okay, then I'm going to reserve your five minutes. I'm going to ask for both you and Mr. Sullivan to turn your microphones off. And Mr. Sullivan, your microphone is not off, although I know you perceive it to be. Um, 
I disconnected it from the computer. I don't, so I don't know how it could be on. Well. If your microphone was off, then I would not be able to hear what you're saying. <laughs> so um, See, right. I appreciate that, Mr. Gibson, because now we're going to have Mr. Sawyer or Attorney Sawyer, who will be then presenting his position on the case and his arguments. Attorney Sawyer. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Um, now your your mic your microphone is quite low. I will try to speak as loud as possible and just uh, uh, ruin my neighbor's morning. So we'll have okay. some fun. Uh, speak my as name loud is as you can because it really is quite low. Will do, Your Honor. My name is Christopher Sawyer, and I'm appearing on behalf of the appellees, Judge Robert Rollman, Dennis Brogan, Michael Dreyer, et al. The issue in this case is whether the indefinite retention of recording devices used in the contemptuous activity is a punishment that is reasonably commensurate with the gravity of the offense. To briefly address the appellant's arguments, the appellants have waived their claims of error as it relates to the seizure of their devices, the seizure of their persons, the contempt proceedings themselves, the contempt charges, as well as their convictions and sentencing. The appellants had 30 days to file their notice of appeal, and a failure to timely file your notice of appeal waives the right to uh, address those issues before this court. In this case, the appellants were convicted of contempt on January 15th, 2021, which gave them until approximately February 15th, 2021 to file their appeal. They did not file their appeal until March 31st, 2021, which was 44 days after their time to file an appeal challenging those issues had lapsed. As it relates to their recording devices, this case, I'm sorry, this court's recent decision and State v. Hammock is dispositive of this case. And consistent with this court's decision in State v. Hammock, we are asking that this court issue an order uh, that the offending recordings be deleted from the devices and the devices returned to the appellants. So and just for no clarity, Attorney Sawyer, it's your position that the time for appealing the, uh, the contempt finding has passed and that the only issue before the court is the seizure and the return of the phones. Is that accurate? That's correct, Your Honor. And if you look at this court's July 6, 2021 entry, uh, this in, uh, that entry is very specific in that it's only as it relates to the uh, return of property, which was a civil action in nature. Now, this morning, we heard some arguments regarding the constitutionality in essence, it's challenging the constitutionality of the local rule. Um, and what is your position with regard to that, those arguments this morning? I would say those arguments have also been waived. Their time to challenge that was during the proceedings, the contempt proceedings in front of Judge Ruhlman, which they did not do so. You can, you can continue with your argument. Thank you. If there are no further questions, I will forego the rest of my time. Thank you. Your okay. Honor. So with regard to hammock, the punishment must be commiserate with the gravity of the offense. What is your position with regard to that? The gravity of the offense, uh, in this case, Your Honor, it would be what this court held in State v. Hammock, which is, which is that it is reasonable for the offending recordings to be deleted and then the uh, devices return to the appellants at the end of the proceedings, which is what we are asking for in this court, that the uh, recordings be deleted from, I believe, January 15th, 2021, and then the devices return to the appellants. Who, who would be deleting the recordings off of these devices? Uh, the, I believe it would have to come from the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office. I believe it would have to go through their forensic department. I do not believe the prosecutor's office has the capability of doing that. So we would just ask for the Hampton County Sheriff's Office. Does it make a difference if a recording is in a hallway rather than in a courtroom? It does not, Your Honor. Uh, Local Rule 33 of the Hampton County Common Police Court is very specific and prohibits recording inside the courthouse. Uh, at all, unless you uh, go through the proper channels and comply with uh, Local Rule 30 uh, to be designated as a member of the media. I was also going to ask, there, there's an indication that there was a cane taken from one of these. I can't remember if it was Mr. Sullivan or Mr. Gibson. Um, is there also a cane that was taken? 
that's my understanding as well. I have not seen a cane, uh, but to the extent that a cane has been taken, uh, that would be part of the property that would be returned uh, as well. Unless there's any other questions from the panel. Okay. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you Attorney Sawyer. Thank you for your arguments this morning. I'm now going to turn to Mr. Sullivan. So, Mr. Sullivan, you have um, your five minutes that are reserved. Yes. Uh, first of all, I would like to rebut his statement about the hallway uh, and Rule 33. Um, the Mr. sixth district. Yes. Before you do that, um, I was hoping that you can address the issue. What is your ultimate goal on this appeal? Is it to get your property back? Is this going to, um, what we have here is a continuation of a crime that has happened uh, for months now. And it is a clearly established law that I can record in the hallway, Enoch versus Hogan. 2019. Uh, I do want my my uh, stuff back, but deleting the evidence, there's been a motion for spoliation in front of this court. And um, as you classify this as a hearing, um, I have not waived my rights and I do not waive my rights for anything. Um, the judge room in inappropriate um, whatever process you want to call this. Uh, it was a U.S. versus Tweel. Um, they got us there through trickery, stating that we would go see, it is in the um, transcript, where we would see the actual judge. And uh, all that evidence is on the recording. So if uh, Christopher Sawyer, Christopher Sawyer will now become an, an accomplice in concert, and anybody that destroys any of that evidence will now become an accomplice. And I accept his oath also by reference. And that oath has been accepted since 2013. So, um, and the Hummock thing was inside of a court. The rule 30, rule 33 is insufficient and it was not okayed by the Supreme Court and the superior by uh, Article 6, Clause 2 of the U.S. Constitution says that's the supremacy clause, and I can record in the hallway if I so choose to exercise that, that right. The part about Mr. Mr. Gibson's race, uh, this, um, this, this um, court services uh, attacked Mr. Gibson's property. They've also attacked Judge Mallory and I was there uh, for, a, for a case with Judge Mallory, and they seemed to uh, attack um, people of color with just impunity. And it's somewhat disgusting to me. Um, so that's the, before I even start, I don't wanna use up any of my time, um, but this is a continuation of a crime from court services, that they think that they have the right to disregard um, and he is correct about the judge shopping. There was three judges that did choose to follow the constitution, but Judge Ruman chose not to. And through the transcript, it's quite evident that he doesn't follow any rules at all. So this is what we're trying to preserve. We're trying to preserve the decorum of the court because quite frankly, a lot of people, and I've, I discussed with a lot of people worldwide, they're kind of shocked at how Hamilton County, this political subdivision known as a corporation for profit, and even around the courthouse, it's, um, you're really losing a lot of integrity. Uh, it, it's, that's not the country I grew up in. It's not the country I wanna, uh, I don't even wanna participate in stuff like this. This is, uh, we, should, we should be free to travel wherever we want. We should be free to exercise the rights that um, we all believe in. And, and any, any rule or law that is repugnant to the constitution is void on its face. It, it's just not, it, it's not acceptable. Um, Mr. Sullivan, you have about one minute of your five minutes. Okay, okay, she asked me a question. I did not want that to take my time. 
Well, um, that's un I would tell you for everyone <laughs> in the history of Court of Appeals, it does take from the time. Okay, then I'll play, I'll play the Sergeant Dreyer threat of retribution in front of the courthouse. I'm not sure what that means. Mr. Sullivan, Mr. Sullivan. Yeah. Thank you. Um, your five minutes for rebuttal have concluded. Okay, so it's clear and understood that he threatened me that there would be ramifications. Is that understood? And just the fact that I walk between an African-American in a hallway, that is not probable cause to stop me, search me, take me through some, I don't even know what kind of process this was. I'm here to restore the decorum of the court. So the Hamilton County has some sort of confidence in whatever you're running down there. Understood, Mr. Sullivan, understood. Thank you for your arguments this morning. Mr. Gibson? Yes, ma'am. You have your five minutes. You can start when you're ready. Yes, ma'am, I do appreciate you for your time and your effort and the judges uh, participating in this, but I am extremely disappointed in the court system, being an African-American, being a Vietnam vet, a decorated Vietnam vet. I fought in the service in Vietnam for this constitution and to have my constitutional rights totally violated by the judges down there is very despicable. I mean, I just find that how could you got how could it how can it happen? It can never happen in a, in a real world, not in, in in America. This should never ever happen. Constitutional rights from from anybody, but having it come from a Vietnam vet, I dodge bullets for you guys. And, and what do you do to me? Put me in prison 21 days. Tell me I'm gonna stay in jail until he, I open up my phone. This judge has no, no knowledge of justice. I feel as though he hates black. I know he hates black. See, I know he hates me to do what I didn't sacrifice for this country and to have him totally violate all of my constitution. Tells me on the bench, I have no constitutional rights. He didn't tell that to the white folks that was in the building. The judges, the, the process, the, uh, the the deputies, not one of them was swear in. Not one. Not one of them was swear in. What kind of judge you got down here? Hmm? You tell me. But uh, this has been an experience that I will never forget. I'm not an evil person. I'm a business person. I, like I said, I fought in the service for you. And for, for this to happen, whole year has been going on. They steal my iPad under the color of law. No way they should even look at it. He has no authority even to ask me what's on my phone or what's inside my phone in the hallway. But they do what they want. 
in Avondale. They use Avondale as a whooping child. Anytime they want anything, they come to Avondale <laughs> and they bring Avondale. We need, <laughs> helicopter. we need another boat because of Avondale. This is a this is a very mess. Information. This information is totally, 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 totally wrong. And they're constantly violating constitutional rights. The city, the state, they cannot make a law bridging the Constitution. They cannot, it's not involved. Any law, any statute, it cannot bridge the Constitution, okay? And I'm here and I want my constitutional rights. I want all of my rights. He puts me in prison. 21 days, I get. One of your Hamilton County judges give me the death sentence. I'm not happy. I will never be happy. You have the opportunity to give me my, give me my uh, property back. Every way that they got, they got us the fruit of the poison tree. He has no business even talking about my phone, talking about my iPad. All that's private, and I expect for it to be private. I'm very disappointed. I would never, ever think this would happen. I would never, ever predict this would happen in Hamilton County. Two years ago, I would say this would never happen. But now, I didn't live with it, I didn't experience it. I'm extremely dis disappointed in each and every member of Hamilton County down there. Each and every one of them had a duty to defend my constitutional right. Each and every one of them took the oath that they would defend my constitutional right. But this black guy here, no. He tells me I have no constitutional rights at all. On the transcript, yes, on the bench, I have no constitutional rights. Tells me on the bench, he's gonna put me in jail for a million years. Yeah, I'm not happy, never will be happy. I request for you to give me my, uh, I request for you to, to, to throw all this out, give all of my property back, and I request for you to have Hamilton County courts to give training to the, ju to the judges, to everybody that have violated my constitutional rights down there because Hamilton County has a duty to protect my constitutional rights. They're in total violation of each and every one of my constitutional rights. Mr. First Gibson. Amendment constitutional rights. Mr. Gibson. Rights of religion, rights of the press. Mr. Gibson. Yes, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your argument this morning. Thank you for your arguments this morning. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, and thank you, thank you all three of you, Mr. Sullivan, Mr. Gibson, and Attorney Sawyer for your arguments this morning. Uh, Mr. Gibson, thank you for your service to our country. Yes, ma'am. We will take the matter under submission and we will issue you a timely decision and we wish everyone a wonderful afternoon. Um, is there anything that the tribunal wants to say to the court as um, there are motions in front of the court at this particular time? Does Mr. Sawyer have anything to say to the court? Okay, thank you all. Okay, silence versus agreement. Okay, all right, great, thank you.